Good morning! Happy New Year again. Today's the 3rd of January, but the first video of the New Year. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that number right there on our dirty screen. 8 degrees outside this morning. It is cold. Burr. So, uh, we're going to work on the shop today for the most part. Uh, Brock should be here in half an hour or so, and we're going to hook that corn head up, get that... Um, picked up, turned the combine around, and uh, start tearing apart the row units, gathering chains, deck plates, all that good stuff so that we can clean them up, get them adjusted right, and put it all back together. Brock's here. So before we hook this thing up, I wanted to... Uh, yeah, lube up the drive shaft because it gets hard to pull and get hooked up right. Is that any better? <laughs> Absolutely is. Okay. So we took it apart and cleaned it up and sprayed some lubricant stuff in there. Still doesn't seem great, but Brock says it's better, so we'll go with it. All right, we ready to hook this up? I think so. Okay. It's cold outside. I don't want to open the door. I'm glad I got a cab. He's got to get that out of the way so I can get out and get spun around. It is a nice sunny day. It's one of those where I should take the combine out and take pictures with it all shiny and nice looking and stuff and beautiful, but it's too cold. And we have work to do. There's that. Okay. We got a little dirt that came off it, so Brock's cleaning that up. I backed it up some so we can get in here. Basically, we we're just going to take all of these apart. We're going to clean them up because there's some dirt and stuff, especially inside these springs, uh, down in there, underneath the deck plates, and then we're going to put it all right back together. So I do want to get some sawhorses and a piece of plywood so we can have a little bit of a bench table to set stuff on as we're working here. And uh, I'm going to get the... Uh, fluid film sprayer that I've got over here and we're going to use that to spray everything and coat it all as we put it back together this stuff so we've got uh, a couple of saw horses here and this nice piece of plywood that we use for painting on um, I'd be willing to sell this if anybody is interested in a piece of plywood. I know what I have, so no lowball offers here. It's got at least 10 coats of paint on each side. This is premium plywood here, guys. Gotta be worth what? Two, three thousand dollars for that sheet? I'll say so it's John Deere paint. It's John Deere paint, that's right, even better. Slip coat on the other side, it's flaking some. There is a small hole here that we had to patch shut. Just, you know, premium. Okay. So we're gonna teach Brock how to take one of these apart. You've done this last year, right Brock? Yeah. But we're gonna refresh your course. So you come over here and do this. The first thing we have to do is release the tension on this uh, spring and idler here. So you gotta put a wrench on there. Yep. And take that bolt loose. So that's not how to do it. You have to spin it. You can actually spin it without holding it for a minute. And then it'll loop. And then hold. There you go. Okay. So now we've got. Yeah, you're going to have to do a little more. But. Now we've got still tension on here, but it's loose from the. Um, here. So we've got to spin this nut off the rest of the way. Okay, what'd you do with that? Spring, oh, right here. All right, so we've got the spring and you can see all of the dirt packed inside there, which is why we're taking these apart. And you guys can see that, yeah. So we're just gonna pull these out and we're gonna set them aside for now. Okay, so now the gathering chain should come off. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, but this should still come off. All right, fine, take that off. We're gonna take this front uh, guidance. Okay. 
Okay. Now the gathering chain will come off. Now this comes off. We'll set that on the floor. We got the front idler sprocket. We can sort of check the bearing in that to make sure that it's good. Okay, we're gonna take this guide off. Should be that one. And the deck plate comes off. And again, you can see all the dirt under there. And then that's down to the frame of the corner head. So um, we can see our snap and rolls here a little bit better, but we don't need to take those off, so we're not gonna do anything there. And just sort of check the nuts on the front, make sure they're tight. I did have one of those come loose on me this spring, first time I've ever, or this fall, first time I've ever had that happen. But all right, so Can't now we need it. to clean it up and put it back together. Or you can take this one apart so you can do the whole row at a time. But so this is the point that we got to tearing it apart last year, where we're like, why don't we just paint it? We've got it all this far. Why don't we just paint it? So we, we did, we painted this. You can go back and find the videos from last year and we just, we just did it. And so now we're gonna sit here and clean this up and get it all clean and then think, oh, maybe we should just paint it. But we're not gonna paint it, Brock. We're not doing it. <laughs> I, we'll see. If we got some spray paint, we could do that. Right, but that's what that fluid film is for. We're gonna spray it. We're gonna spray it, but not. No, 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 no. Wire brush. It not a grinder like a, wheel. Like not a, a yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're kind of compromising here on the paint a little bit. So I did go ahead and take this other side apart. Um, the deck plates on this, um, which are, let me go show you another row that we haven't taken apart yet. These two pieces right here, right? These are called the deck plates, and they are what the, the ears come down and hit and then snap off, and then these gathering chains take the ears up into the head. This side slides, right? So you'll notice over here that there's these um, two notches and that whole thing is on a hydraulic cylinder that kind of pitches it so that it pulls that um, one side of the deck plate, which makes them tighter or narrower depending on your conditions and stuff. So you, because you don't want this to be so wide that the ears can go through it because if the ears hit the snap and rolls, it'll shell kernels off and that's bad. Um, so you want this as tight as you can run it, but if you go too tight, then you start breaking the stalks off and bringing all that extra trash and material through the combine, which is also bad. Um, anyway, point being, half of it slides. And so on the side that slides, we're spraying it with graphite, a uh, slip plate basically, both on the, uh, the, the frame and the bottom of the deck plate and the bottom of this tensioner arm. And the tensioner arm is because it slides back and forth there. So um, we're gonna do that, and then the rest of it we're just gonna clean up and spray with that uh, fluid film stuff and not really paint it. Another thing that we need to do here, um, and it's easier while we've got this apart, is to pull these dipsticks and check the oil levels. There's a gearbox in there, so this one is good. And of course, while we've got it apart, it's a good time to inspect everything. So I'm looking at these sprockets, seeing how much wear we've got. Um, they don't look too bad. There is a little bit of wear, but not bad enough to justify replacing them. I'm looking at the snap and rolls. Um, those look like they're in really good shape, actually. So I did a major rebuild of this corn head in uh, the winter of 2018, between 18 and 19 crop years. 19 was the year we had a bunch of prevent plant because it was so wet in the spring we couldn't get stuff planted. Um, so we only had maybe half of our normal corn acres that year. So essentially, um, all of this stuff has two and a half years of use on it. And uh, uh, those all look good. I was also looking at the gathering chains here a little bit, trying to decide how we should handle these. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle in them, but I don't feel like they're terrible. And uh, I don't know. I think we're gonna we're definitely gonna run them again. Uh, we'll try and lube them up somehow and uh, put them back on there. So I'm still debating exactly how. I want to do that. I don't think soaking them in diesel fuel is the right answer. Uh, some used oil is great, but it creates a mess and everything sticks to it. 
Um, so we'll either spray them down with something, I don't know. We'll figure that out. The gathering chains is a huge upgrade that John Deere made on the 600 series corn heads and all the newer ones now too. On our old heads, which would have been before we even had the S680, when we had the 9660, we had a uh, 893, the older series of corn heads, and the gathering chains were like half as thick. They were, they were much smaller. We would replace those gathering chains every year. Uh, I think that was a holdover from when my dad had trouble back earlier in his farming career, maybe even with the older series head yet where he didn't replace them and then they were breaking throughout the next year and so he just kind of was a just replace them every year but when we saw how much beefier these gathering chains are on these heads um, we've been running them more often these are by no means original the gathering chains were new in 19 as well so they've got two and a half years use on them probably we'll run them again this next year and then think about new ones for next year would be my guess well I decided to uh, just spray these chains down with some of this uh, multi-purpose spray lubricant. Still really like that stuff. I don't know. It'll be fine. Um, pretty much anything we put on there is going to wear off in the first 10 acres anyway, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But we're getting these put back together. Once we get the chain in where we want it, then we put that spring in and you got to start that first nut that he's trying to get on there right now. And then that kind of holds it in place and you can use the impact and the wrench to thread it in farther. See right here. Oh, hang on, Brock. So I've been spraying these, uh, the spring. Trying to get, move that spring from, to one end to the other. Uh, inside there protecting as best we can. Okay. So now he spins that in until uh, should grab that square nut. There you go. Okay. Now you got to hold that nut in the middle until we get this adjusted where we want it. Okay. Let it go. Which is basically we want a spring and a half showing. That's close. Maybe a touch snugger than that. Okay, uh, tighten your other bolts up. Just hit those in, make sure they're tight. That one in the back we kind of leave loose so that it can uh, line up. So these uh, chains on the guides there, there's a couple of little notches. Pointed a notch, Brock, my hands are full. Right there and right there, and that's kind of your guide on where the lugs go, the, the gathering chain, teeth, whatever, so that they're staggered and in just the right spot. All right, and I'm going to, well, I guess I got to hold it, but we're going to just give this one last coat on the stuff that doesn't have it, and I realize that the fluid film is going to make a mess, and it's probably excessive and everything, but, um, I mean, last year I painted everything green, so meet me halfway in the middle there. We've got two rows done. So uh, something I forgot about on the first one and remembered halfway through the second row, but it's kind of too late for now. We'll have to worry about it later. But uh, the gap between these deck plates is kind of critical. Like we have to get them put in just the right spot and there's slotted holes there. So, um, But I need this side to be fully closed in order to get it just right. So we're going to have to wait until we're done and then we'll come back and uh, adjust all of those. Go ahead. So, I could act like I helped with that one, but I didn't really. And I could act like I'm going to help some more, but I'm not really. So, have fun, Brock. I mean, it is. it has warmed up to like 20 degrees. You could go power wash if you want. I think I'll do this. <laughs> yeah. It's not too bad. It's just uh, it takes time to go through and clean everything up. And...
yeah, we'll get it. So I've got some paperwork and some errands to run, so I'm going to go work on that. And we'll be back in a little while. Oh, you guys want an update on my stair treads here? These things turned out fantastic. So I put those two coats on the other day when I filmed it. I don't remember what day that was. Uh, and they were really nice, but they were a little rough and just not super smooth, which I don't really want super smooth because they're stairs, but I didn't want them being rough like that either. So um, was it Saturday, I think, I actually came over and I sanded them down and then put another coat on and now they're just, yeah, mm-hmm. They're nice and smooth. I don't want them to be slippery, but they're nice and smooth. They've got a really nice finish. I like them a lot. So plan is tomorrow to work on starting to install them. We'll see how it goes. How are we doing, Brock? Good. Getting the next one together. Oh, getting the next one apart. Cool. All right. I've got to go run some errands, like I said, and uh, it's almost lunchtime, so have fun. So Nathan's still gone. Um, I've got four of the rows completely done and I'm on the fifth one. I was checking the um, oil in the gearbox here and we got a problem. You can see that it is a milky white so we're going to change the oil in this gearbox all the other ones so far have been good but this one and i don't know about those three but this one's definitely getting changed so i'm going to go down underneath and find the drain i have not drained these so i'll find the drain and drain it So right here is the drain for the gearbox. Um, brought multiple wrenches down here. And it looks like it's that one. I did bring a little funnel. And I got a catch pan under here. We will try not to make a mess. Most likely will, but we'll try. <sighs> Woo, that was about my finger. And keep it clean. I don't know if you guys can see or not. There we go. It's coming out. And yeah, it's... That is not the color that uh, gear oil should be. So it's a good thing we're draining it. Probably should have left the cap off on the top side. I think I'm going to go do that so it gets air in the top side so it'll drain. But uh, yeah, that's why we're changing it right there. I'm back. Brock's got over half of it done. Good work, Brock. Uh, what happens when your boss doesn't give you a lunch break? I told you, no, uh-uh, <laughs> you could have went. Uh, we had a gearbox that had some milky oil in it, which means there was some water in it, which is not good. So was the plug loose? No. Hmm, wonder how it got water in it. Was it look like it's been leaking all over underneath there? Mm -hmm. It seals out? Hmm, okay. Well, anyway, we drained it. We're going to refill that one. Um, I got to look in the book and see. I think it's 80, 90 weight gear lube, but it might be heavier oil than that. I don't know. We'll see. So, um, uh, yeah, let's figure that out. 80, 90 weight. TL5 gear lube through dipstick port until full mark. Do not overfill. 0.44 quart for each one. Oh, wait. From minimum mark to full mark. Okay. Uh, find it. Somewhere it'll tell me how much. Right here. Thousand hours you're supposed to completely change them. Uh, 37.2 ounces. 1100 milliliters. 
That'd be uh, 37, a little over a quart. This bucket here, ADW90. So when he's done there, we'll uh, worry about that. So uh, I'm gonna let Brock keep working on those. Uh, this chain here, you see this chain? Yeah, this isn't supposed to be like that. She's real loose, like real loose. So we're gonna see if it's got, if we should tighten it or if we should, um, well, yeah, remove a link or buy a new chain. So that drives from back here. And there's a tightener sprocket there that does have quite a bit of travel in it. We could tighten that and it would probably be okay. But that feels like a lot of wear, doesn't it? I don't know. But there's a master link if we need to take it apart. Well, I got it tight. Probably too tight, but it'll loosen up pretty quickly once it runs a little bit. And I sprayed it down. So um, there's a pretty good chance this head's going to get a major rebuild a year from now, like I said, uh, with new um, gathering chains and stuff. And so I'll plan on replacing that then as well. Also, probably we'll change the oil in the gearboxes next year and stuff. So I'm... Yeah, I'm kind of in that. If we can make it run another year, we're going to make it run another year kind of uh, mood. Look, I got Brock a fancy new handle for a GoPro. A magnet on the bottom. There you go. No excuses for not filming now. <laughs> He's done a pretty good job. Look, we got a box today. That's a piece that I needed for the concaves. So we can put that back in the combine before we get it out of here. Last one? Oh, he's on the last one. Look at that. Okay, well, we got all of the row units gone through, cleaned up, adjusted, put back together, and uh, coated with this fluid film. So. Brock's gonna go through here and hit the auger and the trough and everything that's shiny, or is normally shiny and now is rusted, but we're just gonna coat it so that it doesn't rust any worse. Um, if this gets too rusted, it doesn't slide very good and you have a hard time getting going next year until it gets shined up again. So um, we're just gonna go ahead and do that. While he's doing that, I'm going to start the combine up and we're gonna close those deck plates all the way in so that we can go through and get them adjusted. You can't see it, but they are closed all the way. The sensor's not working for some reason. I need to look and see why. It wasn't working in the last field, and I don't know if we got a linkage uh, disconnected somewhere or something, but we'll have to figure that out. Okay, well, that went quick. Um, one thing to note, there is some wear in some of these. Did I already talk about this? I may have already talked about this. I don't remember, but there's some wear in these. We might have to replace the deck plates a year from now, too, because... Uh, they've all kind of got in that same spot. There's a little bit of a dimple showing, and it's just it's where all the stalks are rubbing all the time, and it's the same in all of them. So, Brock's got to leave in like a half an hour, so we're finding a few little things to do to keep him busy in the meantime. And one of those is putting this concave back in. We got the uh, replacement box, a little piece like that for the one that's missing there. Hold on, let me turn the light on. Oh, look at that. I can do it without stopping the video. Anyway, um, so he got that put in there, and he's trying at the moment to shove that thing through there. How's that working out? Rotor's in the way. we got to spin it. Uh, wiggle your thing. Uh, try that. So there's a bit of a gap between these ones here, and it's got dirt in it. And because of that dirt, I can't get it to slide back far enough to get that one to go in. So we're going to have to take these bolts off and let them down and clean that gap out and then try and get them to slide. Well, you guys didn't see it, but we got it. Once we got that dirt out of there, then they slid back and tightened that gap up quite a bit. So now we're just getting the bolts put in, everything tightened up. All right, well, Brock went home and... Uh, We'd had a good day. I'm surprised we got through this whole corn head today. I thought that was a day and a half project at least, so that is good. So, um, like I've said before, tomorrow my plan is to do those hardwood um, stair treads in the house. Um, 
and work on that. But we will see. Brock will be back on Wednesday. The goal for Wednesday is to get the combine greased and put back together, all the shields and everything put back on um, so we can get it out of here, if not Wednesday, Thursday morning, and I can get the corn head down to Berkey to store it and all that fun stuff. Um, what else? Oh, I might make a trip to the John Deere dealer tomorrow. Uh, I need a couple of things, and I just haven't been there for a while. Plus, I, it's the new year, and I haven't got my new John Deere calendar, so I'm hoping they still have some on the shelf because, I mean, you got to have that, right? Anyway, uh, it is only 4.30, but I, I'm not feeling the greatest today. Yesterday, oh, yeah, yesterday. So I moved all of my hardwood floor into the house. So all that white oak that my dad's gotten cut up for me, so it's all in the living room there, acclimating. Uh, I'm going to let it sit there for at least this week. Maybe next week we'll start putting that down. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but that is good to have in there. However, it took me like two and a half hours to move it, and I am extremely sore today. I was sore yesterday, and then I woke up in the middle of the night freezing cold, and I think I might be starting to get sick. So that's all fun on top of it, and I just hurt. So I'm going home. So thanks for watching. Have a great night. We'll probably see you again tomorrow, unless I'm super sick and don't come to work tomorrow. In which case, you'll see me when you see me. So, oh, get the door shut. Hey, uh, oh, I do have something else I wanted to talk to you about. Hold up. So we used this uh, fluid film product on our corn head, and the idea is to keep it uh, lubricated and from rusting because it's a... Um, corrosion resistant lanolin based so it's you know lanolin cheap wax basically um anyway it's really good stuff i really like it i've got this fancy sprayer that's actually wool wax branded but wool wax is the same thing in a different brand basically and that sprayer works really really well now i am not telling you this because they're sponsoring me and i get money for doing so however I have signed up to be an Amazon affiliate, and I'm going to put links to Amazon for both of those, the, the fluid film and the sprayer, down in the description. Um, I know that you guys don't like the corporate sellout YouTubers, and I'm not trying to be that way, so this is not an endorsement and advertisement, but I a lot of times will have people ask me where I get stuff, what the product is, and all that, and uh, if I can just throw a link down there for you, if you buy it from my link, or you click on the link and buy anything, I guess, I get a little commission out of it. So, thanks. So anyway, don't hate me for having an Amazon link. Um, but if uh, you like or want to try some of the stuff that I'm using and you want to support the channel, that's a really good way to do it. So thanks for watching today, everybody. Have a great night. We'll see you again tomorrow. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.